everybody. Hello, ladies. It's Christine McAllister coming to you from the Outer Banks, North Carolina. Look at this view. I'm staying in this beautiful house with some family this week. Recharging, getting inspiration, and getting some work done too. Love it, love it, love it. Love these chairs. I wanted to come to you today to talk to you about how I trashed my crippling self-doubt and the comparison um, that was keeping me totally, totally stuck. Hey, Nicole, welcome. Good to see you. Um, so return from um, some time on the beach and you can, hi there, hi, welcome. You can, you can see how the scar is developing. Um, for those of you just joining me, my name is Christine McAllister. I'm the founder of Life with Passion, and I'm a longtime entrepreneur who has built two six-figure businesses and now helps women um, who want to quit their jobs and create the life of their dreams, start or grow their own business. Hi, welcome. I help. That's what I help you do. And so I wanted to talk tonight about something that is really, really near and dear to my heart. I spent years in the self-doubt, you know, um, comparison mode where I just was constantly finding reasons. Hey Miami, what's up? Um, where I was constantly finding reasons to, to doubt myself and keep myself stuck and convince myself why like I wasn't good enough. Right. And so a lot of times I hear women talk about this and some of the things I hear them say are things like, you know, it's already being done. Like someone else is already out there doing it better than me. Um, they feel like maybe they have imposter syndrome where like someone's going to find out that they're not as good as, as they, you know, as they have put themselves out there and they're not actually going to be able to help people with whatever their chosen profession is. Um, they're comparing themselves constantly. They're telling themselves themselves constantly that they're not good enough. And there are a lot of ways that this can um, present itself, but I hear it all the time. And so I wanted to share with you three tips for how I get out of that space. And I want to answer your questions too, if you've got any about how this applies specifically to your life, because it is something that, especially as women, holds us back so much from our bigger purpose, being of service in the world like we could be. Okay, so three simple tips and you ask your questions as they come up, all right? Number one, I focus on gratitude. Now this is honestly something that I thought was really, really cheesy for a long time. Like I think Oprah talked years ago, right, about having a gratitude journal and she talked about how she would write down several things every day, right, and that she was grateful for. And I was like, oh, that's nice. Like whatever, you know, I've got this. When I started doing this, it totally changed my life. When my clients start doing this, it totally changes theirs. It is one of the first simplest, easiest things that you can do and implement right this second, totally for free to completely change your attitude. Gratitude. Okay. Hi you all. Hi everybody. Welcome. Gratitude. Tony Robbins. Thank you for the hearts. Tony Robbins says that positivity and negativity cannot exist in your mind simultaneously. So when we're being grateful, that's a positive emotion, right? We cannot be focused on any of the negative emotions when we're focusing on gratitude. So every single morning in this journal, as long as it lasts, this one's just going to last a couple months. I'm almost done with it. Um, I write down like 10 things I'm grateful for. And it could be the smallest things, you know, like this morning I was writing that I was grateful for the view out my bedroom window and that I was grateful for the furnishings that were inspiring me. Hey, good to see you on here. Um, that, you know, I'm in this beautiful place this week. Nicole says, I need to do this. Yes, Nicole, you start right now. That is homework you can start doing today. Um, and you know, I'm grateful that at this point I am coming to believe that, you know, anything that I want in my business, my life is possible. And I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for that belief. So I write these things down because as someone said, I don't know what I think until I write it down. And for me, that's very true. Writing helps me make sense of the world. So even if I just spend five minutes writing the things I'm grateful for, it puts me in a different space than if I just roll out of bed, check my email and like 
kind of lumber into my day however I happened to wake up. It totally, totally shifts because again, you cannot be focused on positive emotions and negative emotions at the same time. So if you are focused intentionally on being grateful, even if it's just for five minutes, at the beginning of the day that sets the tone for your day. That's why I recommend it first thing in the morning because then it will train your brain to start to look for things to be grateful for. And that's not my natural inclination. My natural inclination is to be worried and anxious. But it's possible through, you know, the this whole idea of neuroplasticity that they've started talking about in neuroscience over the last several years, it's possible to retrain our brains. So that's what I do with my gratitude and that's one way that really I push the negativity and the self-doubt that sometimes I just wake up feeling like really anxious or like how am I going to get everything done I need to do today. Um, that's one way that I deal with that really, really well and it shifts me back to what's important and helps me to focus on you know the tasks that are going to help me get the most done. So if you've got any questions about that, throw them my way, but I highly recommend you write down 10 things that you're grateful for every single day. Number two, that I focus in on myself, my unique gifts, and what I have to offer the world, my purpose, and my why. A lot of times, like if we're scrolling through our Facebook feeds, you know, they've done studies that have proven that those actually make us depressed, right? Um, a lot of us, you know, who are running online-based businesses or want to spend a lot of time on Facebook. So, you know, obviously my business, Life with Passion, is online-based. I work with women from all over the world. So I spend a lot of time on social media, um, supporting the women in my private Facebook group, um, you know, it's, uh, speaking with them or whatever. I run ads um, to reach more women, all of that stuff. And it's, you know, so you can get wind, wind up getting sucked into the, to the news feed. And my husband and I have a nonprofit in memory of our daughter called Miles with Maeve. And that also reaches most people through Facebook. So, you know, and then I run an online marketing business. And so all of those things require me to be on social media a lot by nature of it. And so in one way, it's my livelihood. But in another way, I know that if what I do is grab this phone when I get up first thing in the morning and I um, click that Facebook icon and open the app and start scrolling through my news feed, it is not good for this. It is not good for my mental state because what we naturally do is compare ourselves to other people, but only in ways that leave us find, um, leave us feeling wanting, right? So I had some pretty significant body image issues when I was younger. Um, I was getting reminded of that being on the beach today because I used to hate the beach. I grew up in Florida and I hated the beach because I was so self-conscious about being in a bikini. I'm quite fair skinned and so I couldn't figure out how to, um, to be out there without being burned. I was kind of scared of the ocean because I'd had some bad experiences. And so all my friends are just out there appearing like carefree and I was just like trapped in this um, feeling of inadequacy and you know doubting myself and not liking the way I looked and just not wanting to be there. So I avoided the beach for a lot of years and just noticing how different that felt than it does today when I'm out there, you know, six months pregnant in a bikini. <laughs> and just having a grand old time being able to really take it all in. Um, so I focus on myself, not on comparing myself to what other people are doing, not on like somebody else in my industry who's who I know, you know, um, I know personally or I know a little bit as an acquaintance and I feel like I have as much to offer as they do but they're making more money than me or they're being more successful or they're traveling to cooler places or you fill in the blank. You can always find reasons to, to you know, weigh yourself and find yourself wanting, right? I mean, no matter what that is, we can compare ourselves. And so I focus back on my unique gifts, my purpose my why and my dreams and how I can accomplish those. Basically, it's focusing on what you have control over today and even more specifically than that in this moment because we can totally overwhelm ourselves and almost just like get really, really scattered when we start to look at what everyone else is doing and start to compare ourselves and feel like, well, I'm not doing that and I should be because that would be better for my job, my career, my business, my relationship. I'm not doing that, but maybe I should be. Well, she's doing that, right? 
social media makes this really easy for us to do, especially, but, um, uh, but life does that in general, right? Those of us who remember life before social media, I always did that. So what I want you to do is I really want you to focus on yourself, your unique gifts. If you don't know what they are, start thinking about that. Start asking people in your life what's unique about you, you know, people who you know and trust and are going to be um, positive with you. Start asking what you loved as a little child, a little girl. You know, I was always obsessed with animals. I was always obsessed with animals. I was always in a leader. I was always focused on those things, you know? And so when you look back, my path is actually quite clear, right? To have animals in my life, to lead, to inspire, to teach. Um, but that can get really, um, hazy when we're comparing ourselves. All right. So that's number two. So the first one is gratitude and the, to focus on gratitude and the simple way to do that is to write down 10 things every morning that you're grateful for. I'm watching my battery here cause it's going to die. I'm outside. Um, so if you've got questions, throw them in. Um, number two is to focus on yourself. I focus on me, my unique gifts, my purpose, my why, who I'm meant to serve right? And I take a stand for every woman who's out there to know that she can thrive no matter what she's been through, right? No matter what she is coming up against or going through right now, that it's possible for her not only to survive, but to thrive. And I also take a stand for women getting over their fears and going for the life that they want to today and not having to go through a tragedy like I did to really take a stand and get over those fears and stop caring about what people thought and stop comparing themselves. So focus on yourself, your dreams, nobody else's because you are exactly where you're meant to be today. I believe that. And you have a choice of where you're going to place your attention and what you focus on expands. So if you're focusing on all the reasons that someone else is better than you, guess what? Those are going to be bigger in your mind. But if you're focusing on where you are today and trusting that this journey, the experiences you've had in the past and the fact that they brought you to where you are today is good and where you're meant to be, then you're going to see opportunities and possibilities open up and those other people are going to just become a lot less important because you're living how you are meant to live. Okay. Number three, simplify. All right. So in the beginning of my businesses, like I have had this pattern that I've noticed where like I have signed up for a lot of competitors things and I've done research on them and you know, I've gotten all these emails like from other people doing something similar to me or whatever. Um, I have joined a million Facebook groups. I have filled up my inbox with stuff all the time. People's offers, you know, right? People who are like much bigger, much farther along. I thought that I was going to be inspired by them where what I wound up feeling was like completely overwhelmed and completely behind. And like, I couldn't keep up. And so I decided that I really, really felt in my gut like I needed to simplify, like I needed to unsubscribe from a bunch of email lists, like I needed to leave a bunch of Facebook groups, like I needed to stop feeling like I needed to be everywhere at once and have every social media platform going at once for life with passion, for instance. And I needed to focus and simplify and focus on one goal one goal per month. So that would be my challenge to you as well, that no matter where you are, no matter what you are starting out, where you're starting out right now at this moment or where you are in your process, that you would simplify, that you would give yourself permission to simplify, especially if you're doing this on your own, especially if you are blocked. I'm really good at talking and blocking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I don't mess around. I'm here for you all and not none of these distracting comments from trolls. That you simplify. That you do not allow yourself to get distracted because too many people need what you have to offer. And that's why you're doing it. You know, you're doing it to live the life of your dreams, not anybody else's. And there are a lot of different ways to run a business. And a lot of it depends on what gives you energy and gives you life. 
So there are things I really like to do in my business, like write for instance, that I'm not gonna delegate to somebody else. But there are other things like be a graphic designer that I don't enjoy. And so I love that I have team members who are really, really good at that, um, who are really good at some of these details that I did for a long time so that I would know how to do them. But when I was able to, I outsourced them so that I could focus more on what I was good at and focus, 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 so that what I can focus on now is creating great content for you and coaching, inspiring women around the world and writing that's what I love creating content coaching you know and inspiring other women um, and so I really want you to think about giving yourself permission to simplify and start as simply as you can that's one thing that I really help my my private clients do because it's so important because we all have this tendency especially as entrepreneurs or aspiring entrepreneurs to get totally overwhelmed and then we get stuck you know, and then we lose our motivation because it just feels like too much and we never have enough hours in the day, right? So do we have any questions before I go? I do want to let you know, I just announced yesterday, if you haven't heard that I'm offering a special eight-week package with me, I've never offered this before, go to lifewithpassion.com and click on program one-on-one -on -one coaching, working with me to find out more hit my website, all the details are there, but it's less expensive, it's the least expensive it's ever gonna be to work with me privately. It's an eight week package all based around working with me, one on one, very focused to get you where you wanna be in the next eight weeks. Normally it costs $5,000 to work with me privately. This eight week package comes with two bonus long double sessions and it's $3,000. Installment plans are available, but I've only got 10 spots and I've got to tell you they're going quickly already Which is amazing because women are taking a stand for their dreams this summer. It's halfway through 2016 If you aren't where you want to be Let's talk and see if it would be a good fit for you Hit my website like I said lifewithpassion.com follow me here um, You can find me on Facebook as well You can join my private Facebook community for women who are on the path to quitting their nine to fives or they want to grow their businesses and replace that nine to five income like I did in the first month when I quit my nine to five life with passion society is what it's called life with passion society you can join that I'm in there every day answering your questions and providing you with free support um, and my eight-week package is only available for the next few women or for the next two weeks whichever happens first so they're already selling like I said um, I expect them to be gone soon. So if you would like to talk more about that, let me know. Get on my website. You can request a free call with me to find out if it's a good fit for you at this point. Thanks for joining me so much. I appreciate you being here. I appreciate the hearts. And, um, and I will talk to you soon. Julesy, uh... Julesy Jules, I'm actually my battery's about to die, so I'm gonna I'm gonna um, recommend that you watch the uh, replay and um, and pick up there, and you can hit point three and um, what and the bonus stuff that we talked about afterward. I'm sorry, I'm outside, so I've got to go plug in before this goes. Awesome, 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 and you're welcome to join me and find me on Facebook. I'm Christine McAllister. I'm the founder of Life with Passion. I'm glad you joined me tonight, um, and I will talk to you soon. Have a great night.